Talk. Hi. Hello and welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glockenfleckens. I am Dr. Glockenflecken. I am Lady Glockenflecken. Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery. We're happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're talking about periods. Yes. Among other things, we have the yeah. Shematologist. That's right. With us today. And she is she does something I think very interesting that I didn't even realize was a thing really in medicine was is the combination of hematology and gynecology. Yes. Which makes a lot of sense. Right. It's it's almost embarrassing that we we both are like, oh yeah, huh. Yeah. That does make sense. Like it should just be obvious. But now it is. Yeah. I learned a thing or two about um periods. Yeah, you did. You did. We play it. We play a game. Test your knowledge. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're about to be probably talking about periods a lot in our house. Uh, probably, yes. We have a a middle school daughter now, mm-hmm. so you know, won't be long. We're gonna have to divide and conquer that. Yeah, how do you propose we do that? <laughs> we, I am interested to hear. Should we figure that out on the <laughs> right here on right the here podcast? on the podcast for everyone to <laughs> to to figure out? Um, I mean, you are a medical professional, oh, so absolutely. there is that. I mean, I think the um, the logistics of periods mm-hmm. and like using the tampon and mm-hmm. the I could I could talk about like safety stuff mm-hmm. like safe mm-hmm. sex safe you know like uh, toxic, shock, toxic syndrome. shock syndrome like just all like the medical aspects of things sure. I feel even though I am an ophthalmologist I feel like I can mm-hmm. but like the I feel like some of the more like social aspects of it you yeah. know yeah, tips and tricks. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that you'd be much more uh, qualified qualified to to discuss that. Yeah, thing. I think so. Although, you know, I don't know that she'll want to talk to you about it. That'll That's be interesting. True. Yeah. Like, even if it's just the medical parts of it, she'd probably, I'm going to predict she would, that would be very cringe as the kids say these days. <laughs> to come from me. Yes. But I am more than happy to to. Are you though? Yeah, I can tell I mean, I, by I, your I, face and your voice. There, I, um, you know, <laughs> it might be a little uncomfortable. Uh, maybe but more. Why? It's just another body thing. Like well, it's, you, it's, you changed their diapers. Well, no, it's more. For goodness sake, I think it would be more like I'm. I'm worried I'd make my own daughter uncomfortable. Mm. Well, that's inevitable. You're just gonna do that, right? Just by existing. So that's true. Who cares? That doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. She just got to get over that. Hey, kids, sit down. Let's talk about toxic shock syndrome. <laughs> talk about uh, pressors. We yeah. lead to um, ICU stays and um, and all the sequelae they're in. So, yeah, that sounds like a fascinating dinner <laughs> conversation that she will love to have. Are we doing this over dinner now? I guess so. Okay. If we're sitting down, what should like, we that's have? A, uh, some red meat. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about iron. That's another thing. Yep. Iron anemia. deficiency. These are all, all interrelated topics mm-hmm. that will probably bore our children to tears. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. man. Uh, they learn a lot these days, though, another way. I mean, I'm not saying this is a good substitute for parental conversation. Obviously, you need to do that. But, like, there's a lot of sources of information now, for better or worse. And some, some of it's good and some of it's crap. But uh-huh. I think they are, they are um, a little more... They're able to be more self-sufficient around all of that than than we used to be back in the olden days before well, the internet. These conversations are going to be coming up for us. So if anybody has any tips or tips, this is our yes. first our first foray into the into middle into school, middle school. Into puberty. Yeah, so all it's, the things. it's it's getting real. And so yeah. Uh, yeah, if you have any uh, any tips and tricks for us as parents. Uh, Please let us Even know. Even if you're not a parent yet, if you have like a, here's what you don't want to do, because that's what my mom did when I was a kid. You know, if you have those stories too, we we would like to hear those too. Should we explore that or just go right into the episode? <laughs> let's just keep going. All right. <laughs> keep it moving. Well, let's get to our guest. Let's do it. Dr. Angela Wyant. She's an associate professor of pediatric hematology oncology at the University of Michigan Medical School. Uh, just... Uh, just 
very accomplished uh, individual very here. Very intelligent. Yes, yeah, she's the co-director of a combined hematology gynecology program uh, and co-chair of the NHF working group to identify a national research blueprint to address the needs of uh, young women and girls with bleeding or clotting disorders. So, uh, and she's just like an all-around nice person, yeah. you know. Like you, you just get the sense from her her social media presence and talking to her and whatnot that she's just like very kind. And uh, later on in the episode, she gives us some devastating intel on the um, clotting cascade. That's right. That, so stick uh, around for you, that. You got to You're you gonna want to sit down. Just it'll just uh, totally turn your existence upside down here. Yeah. So uh, let's get to it. Here All she right. is, Dr. Wyan. Do you want to tell them or should I? You can. All right. We're telling our amazing story live in person. Oh, you mean the story where you died? Uh, no, the one where you survived me dying. Oh, yeah, right. We can't wait. We're going to be a meet and greet before each show. Uh, you can get a photo with us. You can meet us. We want to meet you. December 9th, 10th, and 11th in Southern California. We'll be at the Improv in Irvine, Ontario, and Oxnard. To buy tickets and check out the dates, go to glockenflecken.com slash live. And we have a special offer for our Patreon members, the Glock Flock, free meet and greet with a normal ticket. Just tell us your username and you're in. See you in Southern California. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Angela Wyand. It's such a pleasure to to see you in person after uh, seeing you on social media for so many years. Yeah, I do Thanks. think of you as shematologist. Like, that's just your name. That is my name. It's funny when I meet people like, and I have like name tags and stuff, like sometimes people come up and be like, wait, are you the shematologist? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm just Angela Wyand. Like, yeah. not, no, <laughs> don't know who that is. Tell me about her. Yeah. What do you think of her? <laughs> that's right. It's a good name, though. It's a it's a great name for a for oh, a yeah. social media profile. Well, and for what you do specifically, like you know, hematology specific to women and girls, like I yeah. mean, that's perfect. Exactly. Now, when was it? When did you get started on? I, do we have to call it X? We go no, with this I'm not every single it X. time. No, maybe I'm not. When Sorry. did you start with Twitter? Um, so it's funny. I feel like I was like, I started an account because people would like send me tweets and you know, like you can't really get to them very easily if you don't have an account. Mm -hmm. Probably in like, I think it was like 2017, but I didn't understand Twitter at all. And I wasn't using it at all, except for to like see funny tweets that my friends sent me. And then one of my colleagues, like in 2019, I think was like, do you follow any of these hematologists on Twitter? Like people are really active. People are tweeting for meetings. Like, especially this one guy, Mike Macris, who's in England, and he's like, you know, 20 years older than I am, way smarter than I am. And he would go to all these meetings that I was never going to go to all over Europe and be like live tweeting all these presentations. And it was like, I could learn from him, but also like, because I wasn't at the meeting, I wasn't seeing the data, but it was also like him being like, eh, I don't really buy this. Like, so you get this like extra added yeah. educational component. So I started following those people and then kind of started to tweet probably myself like late 2019. So like just kind of before the pandemic. And, you know, live tweeting conferences, that was like a, a big thing for, I feel like it's yeah. not, it, it was a trend obviously for a while. the pandemic, like, you know, affected yeah. live conferences and everything, yeah. but it was, it was a huge deal. Like that's, that's when I started tweeting as I was live tweeting a, a particularly boring conference I was, I was at. Um, and, uh, but it's kind of sad. You don't, kinda, you don't see that anymore. Mm -mm. I don't know if it's just like Twitter's changed now and well, there's just, yes, it's harder to see that, but I don't know. I don't, yeah. I, I'm a bit disillusioned by the changes. I don't know about how you feel, Angela. I'm the same, but I'm also like too old to start something new. Like I have, have accounts <laughs> on like you're all not, these different things. You're not, I promise you. And I'm not. like, I don't know. I just feel, and it's also like, how do you recreate that community? Right? Like, I know. You know all these people, and it's like you go to any one like other app, and I'm like, where are my people? People yeah, who are who are who are not on Twitter or have never been are probably like, why? Why are you guys? Totally. Why are you always talking about this? Like that is that's like the right. least pot. Like that's uh, you know it's not like even a top five. Of, that's where you go to complain about things. But it's not even mean like, to people. It's not even like top five like social media platforms in terms of like the number yeah. of users. But in medicine, it it just it's always felt unique totally. and, and, and the educational aspect is I think a big part of that. Yeah. And totally. like, well, it was like the professional, I mean, there's LinkedIn, but it was like where you go for news and 
um, you know, professional things. And so it's where doctors, I think, felt comfortable having a presence because there's always that line in medicine with social media and professionalism and everyone's trying to figure out, you know, how that should be. And I think Twitter felt safe for that discussion or at least the safest. I yeah. don't know why it wasn't LinkedIn. I don't know why tweet Twitter versus I guess just it was bigger, bigger like, than LinkedIn. I feel like there's this like opportunity to like learn from people. And like, especially when I was starting out, I was like pretty new faculty and like mm-hmm. I would have these questions come up be like, I don't really know who to ask this. And like, they were kind of broad, like not like about a specific patient or whatever, but I could like tag these like hematologists that wrote the paper on that subject. And then they would be like responding to me. And like, I just feel like you had this like magical, I don't know, situation where you could contact these. And it's like, I would never email that person and be like, right. I don't really know like how to interpret this, but like tagging them in a tweet. And then they like respond within 24 hours. It's like amazing. Right. And often Um, I get tricked into learning about non eye related things That's right. in the past. Like all of a sudden, yes. like, why am I reading a thread about like thrombocytopenia? And, no one and, you love blood and, and von you love Willebrand's the disease. And <laughs> oh the yes, spleen. the spleen is his favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I pissed I've pissed some people off. There's people that really like the spleen. Well big I fans mean, of the spleen. Yeah, I'm on I'm on record. I'm on record. Then you're going to overwhelming sepsis, die. That's a, know, That's a problem. Not all the time, though. No, I mean, sometimes no. you don't, and sometimes you just do. You know. I don't want to take my chances with sepsis, though. I'd okay. rather just leave Look, it where it is. I'm on the and record. The thing about the spleen, you may not know this. The spleen is vindictive. Ooh. How so? Like, you only need like a tiny little amount of spleen. So, like, I remember on my surgery rotation, splenules. Splenules, exactly. Like, like. We had this woman and she was an older woman and they were taking her spleen and they took out her spleen and they were doing it laparoscopically. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm just watching because like there's two med students. So one's like driving or something or retract. I don't know what they were doing, but I'm watching. And all of a sudden, like the bag that the spleen's in, like there's stuff like spraying out of it and it was spleen and they had like ripped the bag, but they didn't realize it. And I was like, um... Uh, excuse me. Uh, you oh know, like gosh. as a med student, you're like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, <laughs> but like, this is pretty bad. Cause if there's any spleen, right? Like, especially in some with ITP, like, you know, just a tiny little bit. What, what, so you, all you, you just need a little bit of spleen. You just need a little bit of spleen. So whenever you have like a splenectomy, do they actually leave some spleen behind or is that? Depends what the indication is. They usually take it all out, but like in hematology for kids, um, like now, if there's the option, a lot of times we're doing like partial splenectomies because that will oftentimes like correct the issue that we're dealing with, but leave like some mm-hmm. immune function. I'm, 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 as you know, not a doctor. What does the spleen even do? Like genuine. I know you say that as a joke, but I'm saying it. <laughs> seriously I'm, what does the spleen i'm kind do? of starting to believe my own jokes though like really maybe <laughs> it's problem, not right? necessary i don't know no so it's important especially important for like certain encapsulated organisms so that's why like if someone doesn't have a spleen or if they have their spleen removed oftentimes they'll be on antibiotics for like a period of time and if they get like a fever at home it can be an emergency because before they had people come in or before they had them on prophylactic antibiotics people would die of like overwhelming infection from these specific organisms but it also filters other things. And so it can cause problems with like trapping different types of blood cells and causing all kinds of hematologic problems. Interesting. But wouldn't you agree that it would be better to have two livers instead of a spleen? Mm. I mean, they're, they're just, it's right there. Just another. But you don't even need the whole liver you have. Like I could give part of my liver to somebody who needed a liver transplant, right? I already have mm, enough liver. That's a good point. I guess I, I'm just, you know, as a as a, a a doctor of a specialty where I have two of the same organ, uh-huh. I just, I, that's where my mind immediately goes. Which organs could we benefit from having two of? Yeah. But we, we benefit from having two eyes because they work like together. Whole, what's that called? <laughs> binocular vision <laughs> yes like you need both of it. if you only have one eye yes you can still see but you're going to lose some aspects of you know True. what vision can look do how, for look you. how much I you've learned rather, about ophthalmology yeah uh, i would rather lose my spleen than an eye yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. i'm talking about yeah. yeah yeah also eyes like front and center people no one knows if you don't have part of your spleen no one cares no if you don't have an eye that's gonna you're gonna get some questions so so in hematology would you say that the spleen that's like your organ that's, no, the bone marrow. Or, uh, yeah, duh. Marrow. Even I know that one. Oh, that's embarrassing. Well, no, I, I guess you, I don't. I guess I don't think of bone marrow as an organ. 
but I guess it well, is, isn't okay. it? I don't know what the definition of an organ is. I think about <laughs> yeah. this sometimes because people say like the skin is the biggest organ, and I'm like, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, Does that mean like hair is an organ? <laughs> but hair's dead and skin's alive. We're gonna oh, right? we're gonna hear some from some dermatologists here. Yeah, um, yeah. Ask the operational that. definition of organ. I don't that's know. The that. Nerdiest question anyone has heard yet today. <laughs> it really is. It what really was is. it? So what? What? Tell us about the why? Why hematology, oncology? Why did you end up in this specialty? Yeah. So I think you know first I picked peds, and so that's like the easiest decision anyone can make because everyone should go into peds because it's like you're not there even you picking anything; you're just picking like a population. And kids, you guys have kids, like they're so yeah. much more fun than adults. They do so much better than adults. Well, they're they're certainly weirder. <laughs> yes, certainly yeah. weirder. Like you have like more funny like clinic interactions. Yeah. And, like oh, yeah. they can say things that like if an adult said, it'd be super creepy or if right. an adult did, right? Like my patients like hug me and it's like, I don't want yeah. like old creepy men <laughs> hugging me, but like right. a cute little two-year-old, like sweet. Yeah, let's say it on my right. lap. But like an old man's <laughs> in my lap, mm, not so good. Doesn't um, good. Doesn't translate. So peds is easy, right? And then the problem that I had with peds is like, I actually like sick patients and luckily kids often are not sick. And so- um, it was really between like pediatric ICU and hemog because those were like mm -hmm. sicker mm -hmm. patients that had, I thought, more interesting problems. And then with ICU, it's just awful. Like there's, yeah. uh, I couldn't do like the non-accidental trauma thing. Like, you know, you have a kid come in who's like a shaken baby or something. Yeah. And it's just right. like, Whoa. with cancer, it's like, it's horrible and it happens and we're all yeah, on the same kids team. Yeah, cancer's so much better. <laughs> but it's like we're on the same team, right? You come right. in and we're like, cancer sucks yeah. and it happens and we don't know why it happens but like we're all fighting it versus like you shook your baby and they were perfect and now they're right. not right yeah that would be harder to it's like to i just couldn't do parents it that way yeah. yeah ophthalmology wasn't in the cards for you um i think that actually the way to determine if someone can be an ophthalmologist is to ask just two words globe injury Ugh. like i hear that and it i i really like throw up a little in my mouth just yeah. like thinking about it so well, no. you you almost lost your eye once. Oh right? my god, it was bad. <laughs> Tell it us was about so it. So <laughs> bad. Look, now I have two eyes, but it, it could have been a different story. Um, so yeah, so I'm a, I think a very different doctor than you are, obviously, and I'm not the person who is like looking for procedures. You know, I think usually you have like med students and residents, and they're like, oh, let me do like the lumbar puncture. Let me do and like in hemog we do lumbar punctures and bone marrow biopsies, but like it's not a huge part of like what I do. Um, so in training, I was never like the person who was like, I'll see this kid because I want to do stitches. I was always like, you see that kid and I'll like talk to some people and like feel their belly or whatever. So <laughs> Come here, it, was, like, busy busy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was like a busy night um, in the ER and like everyone had too many patients and three patients came in all at once. And it was like two things that seemed like they could be procedural and then like rash. And I was like, Oh, rash. I'll go see the rash. Right. Like I'm not going to have to, I don't want to drink procedures. I'll go see this rash. Um, and the rash turned out to be this like pulsating MRSA abscess, which of yeah. course is pulsating <laughs> abscess. It was, it was literally what like, level of abscess is that? That seems like a I think pretty it's bad like level one. five, yeah. it's like one to five, like way, pulsating, pulse, is pulsating. Five. <laughs> pulsatile abscess. But I mean, the family was amazing. Like the kid had had them before, siblings had had them before. Mom like came in right away, was like, I know what this is. You need to cut it open. And I was like, yeah, someone needs to cut that open for you. <laughs> like we should find someone who can do that. So I go and I'm like thinking I'm being like all sneaky. And I go talk to the attending and I'm like, okay, cute little three-year-old. Because, you know, in PhD, you have to like start with like cute or like what they're doing, you know, some like descriptor. Mm -hmm. It's like needs an IND. You know, I know we're really busy, so I could start with the next patient if you just like want to get it done. And she's like, "Oh no, no! Like learning, come and do this IND." And I'm like, "Okay, so I'm going to do a procedure, fine." But because I like avoided all the procedures, I didn't really know where like things were or mm -hmm. all that. And so she's like, "Go get the stuff together and meet me back in the room." So I go and I like grab all the stuff and I somehow like muddle it together. And I get in the room and just as I'm walking in, I notice she has these like huge glass, like reading glasses. And so I'm like, oh, she doesn't need eye protection. And I realized I haven't brought like eye protection for me. And I had that like thought where I stopped and I was like, I mean, come on, like, I'm going to like open this abscess. Is it really going to go in my eye? Like, what are the chances this is really going to go in my eye? Right. Not happening. So I go on time. in and then yeah. I sit on this like little, you know, those stupid little stools that are like wheelie. I'm on my little stool and I'm just like, Ugh. and I 
put the knife in and of course like it's pulsating and like so tension filled that like as soon as I put it in there's like a splash and I'm basically immediately blinded like I I mean not really I'm being hyperbolic but I'm just like and there was these like dueling parts of me like two little voices in my head where one is like there is no way that just happened. Like both that's eyes? absurd. Both eyes. No, I think just one eye, but okay. uh, again, I can't. Right. You know, it's yeah, one yeah. of those things where it's like pus, like splashes on your face. You're like, uh, <laughs> so really might throw up right oh, now. Oh, yeah. you'll be fine. That's so my. Like, you know how you said everybody's got a body fluid they can't do. That's that's one well, of, especially in your eye. You right? have like, like four or five body yes. fluids. You oh. know, deal with. Yeah, yeah. So, Oof. so I'm like immediately blinded, and then I'm like arguing with myself, like this can't possibly be happening. Versus like. I can feel mm-hmm. the pressure in my eye increasing because pus is forming there and the MRSA are like replicating in my eyeball. And I'm like, you know, I'm like going through this whole thing. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. and like, of course, as this all happens, I like fall off the chair <laughs> because of course I do. Right. Of, <laughs> of course you like fall off the chair. Right. Like, of course. When you so get then, squirted in the eyeball. <laughs> so the attending hasn't realized that I've been like squirted in the eyeball, but she like realizes I'm on the floor and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, Oh, and like, the one voice had won out and was like, you have pus uh-huh. in your eyeball. And so I'm like, well, uh, like, I think I just got pus in my eyeball. And she's like, huge sigh, right? Because it's like so busy. And like, this is not what she wants to be dealing with on her ER shift. And so she's like, I'm like, if you want to just like finish this up, she's like, no, no, you can finish this up. So of course, I've like finished the procedure. And I'm oh, sitting there man. the whole time, like, <laughs> um, I need to call ophthalmology. Like, this is an emergent ophthalmology consult. They need a vancomycin eye bath. They're going to like, <laughs> like just pour either like bleach or vancomycin like directly on my eye or something like that's clearly what you would do uh, obviously. ophthalmologist editorial note do not pour bleach on anybody's eye okay continue <laughs> but what about vancomycin have you ever done a vancomycin eye bath i don't i would say in that situation what i would probably re- recommend it is what we do um pre-op is like a betadine wash Okay. That's well, something that you could do. I don't know. I, I have no idea if that would kill MRSA. I, yeah, I, I know, right? Maybe, maybe not, but we use Betadine for a lot of things. And but so, I'm like the psychosomatic person though, right? Where like, you know, it like gets in my eye and then I'm like, I'm blind, like immediately, right? Or yeah. like I walk into a room of like somebody who has meningitis, like question meningitis. I'm like, oh, my neck. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like I have some like uh-huh. nuclear rigidity, you know, like I'm that person. So I like finish up with a patient, like finish so, up with my other so patient. So physician was a good career choice for you. Yeah. Very <laughs> oh, good. That's, that's very like, good. that's like a universal <laughs> experience. Like, yeah. It's you're... a chicken or the egg. I think it turns you into. Oh, you're in class. You're in class is like a second year. You're learning about like ALS and you're, you're like, your you're leg, like... your leg twitches. You're like, oh, great. That's it for me. <laughs> it's totally true. It's totally true. And I do the same with my kids too. But so she's like, meet me in room 18. And I'm thinking like, is she going to call ophthalmology? Like, I'm happy to call them. Like, I'm the idiot who did this, whatever. No, turns out. And if I was a melodramatic person, I would say it turns out that people who deal with eyes might know something about like torture and like waterboarding Mm -hmm. because what met me in that room Mm -hmm. was something called a Morgan lens. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's rough. It is insane. It was literally the craziest experience of my entire life. So (laughs) she's like, okay, go in room 18. Like the nurse comes and he has this like contraption and then he has these like bags of saline or something. And it's literally like, I don't wear glasses or contact lens. So like, I'm very eye naive. Like no one's touching my eyes or doing anything with my eyes. And they literally have these like two little like contact lens like things, but they're like thicker, I think. And they have like a hole in it. And then it's like connected to this tube oh, no. and they yeah. put it in your eye. So you can't close your eye, right? It's like uh. they're, both, they're in there. And then they just like flush it with like so much normal saline. Yeah. And so you're like laying there and you can't close your eyes and you can't really see anything, but like there's just water just like gushing. Uh, and yeah. It's, it's like, like a neti pot for your eyeballs. Yeah, it, it's it's a waterboarding for your eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. We, we use it for um for chemical injuries. Yeah. So when you get chemical out. in there, we have to that that causes the pH to be radically different than what it's supposed to be. We'll just continuously flush the oh. eye. I'm surprised actually they did that just. For, I have no for idea that. if that was even the right thing to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, I was going to ask. Mean, what do you think of that, that decision? I have no idea. I didn't even know that it's thing existed. It's a little existed. aggressive. <laughs> I don't know. I, I literally had no idea it existed. And then when she's like, we're going to put these in your eyes. And I was like, you are not. And then I was like, well, I guess if I'm going to lose my eyeball. Like, cool, put it in. Um, but it literally is <laughs> crazy. In and I have my eyeballs and I didn't like, you know, get any pus out of them. So I guess it worked or maybe I didn't need it. I don't know. It was not my favorite. I mean, you could have just, you know, squirt 
take a like a like a water bottle just a normal saline bottle you put a yeah. nozzle on it and just like you know squirt it in there well, for see, about you know in labs seconds. they have those like little, yeah, little like wash water stations. Stations. I wash yeah, stations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i always wanted to use one of those well it's right? not too late <laughs> <laughs> I, we could make that happen for you. I can sure. understand how <laughs> yeah. that would turn you off to ophthalmology. I mean, uh, it was it was huh. so crazy. Like, yeah. What part of this was in training? Was, this when is when in was residency this? in residency? Seattle. Yeah. yeah, Seattle Children's. Yeah. I I had a um, I also had a gusher once uh, similar to that, except Ugh. it did get me in the face. I don't think <sighs> it got my eye, but um, it what made it worse was I was a resident and I was like training, like a like a, I was a senior resident training a first year resident. I was like, Oh, this is no big deal. Like this big, you know, we'll just, we'll just, you know, open it up. We'll take a little sample of it, send it off. I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, this is uh, easy for me, you know? And, uh, and then sure enough, I, I, you know, made a light, little incision right in the face. I felt kind of silly. Disgusting. I have, really I actually disgusting. have a story that, that is on this level because, you know, I, don't work in a medical field, but I am a mm-hmm. parent, and sometimes those things are not that different. Totally. I don't even know. Did I tell? I must have told you this Probably. story. But one time we were at a restaurant, and I had um, our older daughter was just, you know, potty training and and all of that, and so she had to go to the bathroom, and so took her in. Well, no, you were there because you we had the baby, and you sat at the table with the baby. I remember that. So took her into the bathroom. And she sits on the toilet and she does her thing and it's all fine. But she's cut like still so little that she's like afraid of falling in the toilet. And like that is still a actual possibility that could happen, you know. So I'm sitting there just holding her on the toilet while she does her business. And I'm like having to squat down because, you know, I can't just lean over like that for that, you know. So I squatted down holding her around the waist. She does her thing. She gets the toilet paper she attempts to clean up after herself and th- thankfully this is all just just urine this is all that has happened i'm so glad to report because she leaves a trail of the toilet paper like she doesn't know how to like you know use it very well so she's just like this big trail of toilet paper that goes into the water of the toilet bowl that she has just peed into mm-hmm. and then she goes whoosh, and she just whips it. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I think she was trying to, like, put it into the toilet or uh, something behind her. You know, I don't know why what, she did it that way, but she just whipped it. And all of that water and pee uh, from the toilet just uh, sprays me all across the face, gets in my eyeball. I remember that because then I came out to you and I was like, I just got pee in my eyeball what do i do hey, people, you're gonna, you know what use you said? urine you know what you said what oh wait what it's fine <laughs> that's what he said it's baby pee i'm sure that's somehow <laughs> better no, public no, no. toilet I like, bowl i feel like morgan lens is needed because actually yeah. isn't it like ph mm. is much different than your eye urine right uh yeah, yeah. but it's very diluted at least i guess yeah, i had that going I, for yeah, me that's, but that's... oh my gosh that was wait, the most wait, wait. horrifying you said moment people use urine eye drops oh yeah that's one of the those things that well like not not but not like they're not supposed to way. no right. they're not supposed to this is like these are like fringe facebook groups uh where they do urine therapy this is like a thing uh that because you know as it's not a legitimate thing, i'm sure you I get some like of this like say. when when yeah when you're on social media and people yeah. know that you specialize in a particular thing and you have a big yeah. following, yeah. you're going to hear about all the stuff yeah. right, that happens in the world with that part of the body. So, of course, like any TikTok or whatever that comes up about anything tagged. I related, I get tagged. And one yeah. of those things is always urine therapy. Uh, and so what do they I heard about the do? drinking. This was, but not the. Uh, yeah, no. This was like, um, I guess the first time I heard about it was probably like pre-pandemic. It was like 2019 or something, uh, and um, people using aged urine. It's not just urine; they like somehow aging it, like produces like some in kind a of wine healing mill? property. Like, where is this really? happening? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of. Yeah. I detect notes of oak. That's right. And exactly. A little buttery. <laughs> Good question. I didn't ask the people like how they age it or what their process is, but um, fermented. But yeah, it all. yeah. And then they, 
And then it's so funny because like you, people would send me screenshots of these like Facebook comments and like, well, I've been I've been using I have this this you know you know pink redness, eye yeah. redness irritation and I've been using urine eye drops and it's just uh, it's getting worse. Huh? Who thought? What do, What do I do? And they're like, use it more, mm. more. You're not using it enough. You're not doing the right like uh, treatment regimen. That's right. I don't know. So yeah. so yeah, that's I don't know how Why we got into that. Why do they do that? Oh, what yeah. do you think it's gonna do? Um, uh, it, uh, some kind of antiseptic something, uh, which is silly it's, because they're perfectly normal eyeballs. Probably because start. It, it's not like urine is is sterile. <laughs> well, yeah. a lot of people think so. That is a, a common. That myth is out a there. comment. Yeah. 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 What in the hematology? What are the what are the do you, do you have any like really strange kind of you know practices that have caught I feel on like that... not so much with hematology bloodletting um, blood <laughs> 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 yeah, well we like actually kind of do that right like there's like conditions where yeah. we, like take people's blood it has um, come up surprisingly often on this podcast we've talked yeah. about leeches yeah. we've talked about leeches, leeches and bloodletting yeah uh, uh. no i mean i feel Probably like it's not. more it's like what i hear about like stuff. gynecology oh yeah do you know oh, what i mean yeah. like there's i know patients that are that. like i do vaginal steaming to help my heavy menses and i'm like why yeah. I don't know what that means exactly. Like what that seems, I don't know. Well, I have a never ending supply of things that people do to their eyes. It... Which baffles me because most, you know, like a lot of people don't want anything near their eyes. No. You don't like things no. touching your And then people do all sorts of eye drops. Yeah, no. disgusting things to their eyes. I guess there's like a, a two ends of a I, spectrum. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I can't explain it. Maybe yeah. it's all the people that should have been ophthalmologists. Oh, oh yeah, oof. maybe they're just bored maybe. and they're like, "Hey, let's let's try this out." <laughs> maybe Do you it, ever ask? Do you get I... patients like that, or you just see it on? Well, the internet? It, it creates good engagement on social media because you know it's your face, and so you like put you can put mascara directly onto your eyeball, and it makes for a video that's going to get you know hundreds of thousands of views and yeah. millions of views, and so I feel like I don't know. That's do something else with your life if that's where right? you're at. Well, yeah. Right? <laughs> well, okay, here's a question, Angela. I've been I've been dying to ask a hematologist, what is your favorite blood vessel? I thought oh, you were sorry, gonna say what vessel. is hematology? What's your favorite <laughs> blood cell? What is your favorite blood cell? That's so hard. It's like asking my favorite child. <laughs> Except there's more blood vessels than children, so it's even harder than that. <sighs> what do you think? Mass cell? No, I gotta go with the platelet. I think platelets. I don't know no, anything no, about no, it. Why you look at me? I'm going the red cell. Red, red blood cell. cell. Yeah, a red good old side. fashioned classic. Because you can have like zero white cells, you can have like zero platelets, and you can be okay. Yeah, but you can't have you like can? zero red blood. Yeah, I mean not good, but you can like live. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't live without red blood cells. Mm. Sure. What do platelets do? They help your blood clot. Okay. I mean, that seems like you might need those. You do. But it's amazing. <laughs> like, we have these patients with, like, ITP, and, like, sometimes, somehow What's they're ITP? kind of okay. Where you have your body, like, destroys all your platelets. Oh, well, that's weird. Yeah, it's like an yeah. autoimmune thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. How how low so how what's the lowest platelet? Like zero. You, like zero? Like no zero so, platelets? I mean, they have platelets. It's just they can't, you know. Not coming up on the lab test. Yeah. yeah. Blood, man, hematology is wild. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the best. It's the best. Well, on that note, yeah. let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, hey, Kristen, what do you got there? Oh, this? Oh, well, you may not know this as an ophthalmologist, but uh, this is called a stethoscope. Yeah, I know what a stethoscope is. I also know it's supposed to go in your ears and not sitting on top of your headphones. No, I like it better this way. Besides, this is not just any stethoscope. Mm. This is the Echo Core 500 digital stethoscope uh, with three lead ECG. I've heard about these things. Yeah. 40 times noise amplification, That's right. noise cancellation, mm -hmm. three audio filter modes, you know it. and a full color display. Yeah, buddy. 60 hours of battery life, too. That's right. Everybody loves a good battery life, and it's durable. That's right. Awesome. We have a special offer for our audience here in the U.S. Learn more at echohealth.com slash KKH. That's ekohealth.com slash KKH and use code NOC50 for a 75-day risk-free trial and a free case and free shipping to the continental U.S. to get your core 500 stethoscope. Hey, Kristen, have you ever heard of eyelid mites? I try not to they think look about like this. Them, so 
gosh. Get this. your bouquet of eyelid mites out of my face. Look at these little cute eyelid mites. Yeah. They're not usually this big. Thank goodness. But you know what they do? What? They cause itchy, red, irritated eyelids. Mm, I don't want that. A lot of people don't know that it's actually sometimes demodex mites. That's horrifying. Yeah, they cause demodex blepharitis. But don't get freaked out, Kristen. Get checked out. Mm. Yeah. To find more information, go to eyelidcheck.com. Again, that's E-Y-E-L-I-D check.com to get more information about demodex blepharitis. All right, we are back with Dr. Angela Wyland. Wyand. Why? I would say Wyland. Sorry. I know Wyand. that's what everyone does. Wyland. Uh, that's the name of the uh, oh, uh, my millennials coming out here. Um, the name of the lead singer for Stumptable Pilots. Oh. But is that how you pronounce it? Is it like Wayland? Wait, is it Wayland? Wyland? I don't know. I don't know. Wyand. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyway. forget about it. It doesn't matter. All right. Um, Angela, shematologist. <laughs> Ange- that's right, shematologist. Um, by the way, a great tw- uh, tweet. Uh, you still call them tweetatorials. You're like uh, mm. what, what, I'm fantastic sorry. Did you that. just say tweetatorials? Tweetatorials. Tweetatorials. Tweetorial. Tweetatorial. Tweetatorial. No. I feel like your oh no. your tweets? wife is like more med Twitter than you are. It's right. Not, it's not tweetatorial. Tweetorial. Tweetorial. Like tutorial. There's not an A. No, it's not no, like tweet. You don't say tutorial. Tu- tu- <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> tutorial. Tutorial. <laughs> I guess you're right. My God. All right. Tweetorial. Anyway. Oh, you're just killing me today. I'm just. Anyway, dying you got some great stuff on there. Uh, there and uh, for for anybody who's uh, just a quick plug for the shematologist and her education on yeah. on Twitter now X. It's good stuff. So have you moved over to X. threads at all? Are you doing that or no? No, I get a little weirded out by like it being connected to Facebook. Yeah. And, the whole meta I world. I tried it out. I got an account over there, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you post some things. It was not, um, it, it's, it's got a ways to go to try to does. recreate that community. It's got potential though. We'll yeah. see. Are you guys anyway. on blue sky or no? I, I have an account. I do have an account on there. See, that's the thing. I feel like I, everyone's I collecting handle... accounts and they don't yeah. ever go there. It's like, right. yeah. I can't handle all the different things. There's too many no. things. I know. I need us to like come to a consensus of which one are we all going to be on, and then <laughs> I think I'll go there. would be a good pe- like good people to spearhead that. Like oh, start a poll God. and be like, where are we going? We're just going to decide. I don't want to spearhead anything in my <laughs> life. Oh, stop. <laughs> well, Kristen can do it. She's amazing. Yeah. She spearheads. I mean, she like spearheaded your life. That's yeah, true. That's, that's, that's in many ways, true. I do that every day. Yes. In many ways, <laughs> I have to say too that. Um, you're such an inspiration, like the whole saving lives thing, right? Like, I mean, come on. But <laughs> we go to the, this cottage, like in Canada, that's only accessible by boat every summer. And we were up there. And like one night randomly at like two o'clock in the morning, I was like, oh my God, what if Ted, that's my husband, like, what if his heart stopped? Like, we're in Canada. Is it 911 or is it a different number? And then I was like, oh. I got to figure this out. And like, all because of you. Cause I was like, oh. like, she saved her husband's life. And like, I'm a doctor and I'm not even going to be able to save it. Like, I'm going to be like, oh, sorry. I didn't really know. I didn't, didn't, I didn't know what know to call. What the emergency <laughs> number call. is in Canada. Yeah. But it is 911, at least there. So, okay. okay. Yeah. I feel like it's you could just know. like not, try various combinations 999, 911. <laughs> that's what I thought it was, is 999. I think that's in yeah. the UK or Britain. Something. Yeah. Something I don't know. Anyway. Sorry. Well, tangent. we have gone. What are we, yeah, we going to do? We are going to play a game. Let's, let's do it. With Dr. Wyand. We are going to play a game called Out Damned Spot. Out Damned Spot. Okay. Yes. Uh, we are going to test your knowledge mm-hmm. of periods oh, and the yes. period experience. I got this. I got this. <laughs> so Dr. Wyand here specializes in hematology with women and girls and okay. so this is right up her alley oh by, by the way before we do that i that, that's actually something i'm uh, reading your background uh i know you're the co-director of a combined hematology gynecology program yeah i, I didn't Did you know make that up i didn't yeah Did i didn't know that was a like a, <laughs> yes. a like a, a specific program that's cool yeah i mean it makes cool. sense it, it does make a lot of sense, of sense but it's so fun how many of those are there out there it's becoming more um, common. Yeah. We actually just like, there's this big organization, the Foundation for Women and Girls with Blood Disorders, and they kind of spearheaded like starting these clinics. And we actually just like looked back to see and are publishing a paper on like kind of how this is becoming more of a thing mm-hmm. and how like hemophilia treatment centers are seeing more women than they previously were because of like the advent of these clinics. And it's just nice for patients because otherwise they would like see us and see gynecology and maybe we talk yeah. to each other, maybe we don't, but now they can just kind of come and nice. get it all figured out. Very cool. 
So I have to answer questions about about periods. periods. I mean, yeah. you have daughters, so this is this is important. It is important. Yep. Okay, let's do it. All right. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I haven't thought about this in a while. Okay. So I'm gonna we're I'm gonna give you some questions and you're gonna answer and Dr. Wyand and I are gonna are gonna weigh in about the accuracy of your understanding. Okay. Okay. What is considered a normal length of time for a period? Um I think the, the range it's, it can be a range. I think uh, it's, it shouldn't be more than a week, right? So I'd say like seven or fewer days is normal. Is that Very right? Good. That's what it says. I mean, it depends who you like, what you look at, but it's usually like less than eight or less than seven. So perfect. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. What is period underwear? Uh, period underwear. I mean, uh, I, I assume it's like thicker underwear that you can wear, you know, that's more absorbent. That, okay. That, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to, that's all I got. What, what do you, what do you think it would be thick, thicker how? Uh, Elaborate. like just uh, the, uh, the, there's more, more, uh, fabric there. Oh, just like so more that, layers so of that if you get your period, whatever. you know, you don't like soak through the underwear because uh -huh. like you think maybe it's going to happen sometime uh -huh. soon. And you so you wear like a thicker pair of underwear. Yeah. OK. Do you want to tell him what it actually is? <laughs> so I feel like this is an interesting thing, right? Because it's like the definition, I think, has probably changed. Right. So it's a newer thing, right? Where like basically mm -hmm. you can buy specific underwear that are absorbent. Some people are able to wear them and not have to wear like a pad or a tampon or a menstrual cup. Like However, something it's in addition. not just additional layers of cotton. <laughs> like right, it's, right. A, it's, it's, a, it's actual like, yeah, absorbent material, okay. material. that's in gotcha. there. Designed but for I feel that like yes. before okay. that came out, people would say like period underwear. And it was like, oh, the underwear you wear when you're going to have your period, that's like not that nice. Right. It's not cute. And you, don't, you don't care if it gets ruined. Get yeah. Right. Gotcha. So it's is, is like, it's not disposable. Like you still wash it, right? It's yeah. Like yeah. A, Okay. Yeah, they're washable, reusable. It's like, you know, a more sustainable option. Okay. You know. Good, good to know. Yeah. All right, there you go. Period you underwear. Go. All right. So, when our when it's time for our daughters to go on period underwear shopping, now you're equipped to take them. I'm gonna yes, well, <laughs> absolutely. Go right over the target. But see, this is the thing. Like, menstruation Can we use is Cole's so cash on it? <laughs> Gotta that? be open. That's right. Yeah, so stigmatized over time. I literally see oh. teenage girls and they come in, I say, How are your periods? And they say, Fine. And then it's like they're bleeding for four weeks in a row. Yeah. But like no yeah, one ever like, said, that's like not fine. That's not fine. Right. And then their mom's like, Oh, I had that too. And then I had my uterus taken out when I was 25. Oh, like, super. Oh, maybe that was about relevant that is knowledge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, so you both have a bleeding Please. disorder. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Welcome to my clinic. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I mean, you've done worse things. You with, with these children of ours, oh, you've oh, you've I've, cleaned I've, up all sorts of I'll body them, fluids, and I've I've got I'll take them to shop for whatever period related clothing they need. Okay, sure. Just absolutely. you need to work on your face. You need to fix your face uh, first. Well, I, I, I <laughs> absolutely. I will. I you've will, got some time. You I can will work go this out. to Target with a with a smile on my face <laughs> as I ask the the sales associate where they have the period underwear. Okay. Absolutely. Fix your All face. Right. I love it. Fix your face. I had, you'd be surprised how often I need to say that. <laughs> okay. What is considered a normal length of time between periods? Speaking of bleeding for four weeks in a row, what is a normal length of time between periods? Um, a month. You mean a b between, so like three weeks, three to four weeks? Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, right. it's kind of a wider range of normal than that. It's usually like 21 to 35 days, somewhere in that range, but. Okay. Yeah. Three to five right. weeks. Oh, this is a fun one. What is a period cup? Um, it's that thing you drink out of when you have your period. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you don't get your lady germs uh -huh. on other people. <laughs> right. You wouldn't uh, want to like infect them with the yeah. periodness. Right. Ew. A period, uh. period cup. It would be something you'd use. Like as an alternative, like a tampon. Oh, okay. Right. So I'm surprised you know that. Yeah, you 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 know put it into the vagina and then it collects the 
menstrual fluid, mm-hmm. and then you you know empty it out in the bathroom. I'm impressed. There you go. All right. Nice work. Um, You're so good. So far. <laughs> Besides the like, wad up some toilet paper and make a period underwear. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I mean, if you're in a pinch, uh, that'll work, I guess. Yeah. You could just sell like multiple layers of like regular underwear together. Like, Ooh, underwear. I like this one. Okay. Okay. Where do people stash their feminine hygiene products on the way to the restroom when they don't have a pocket? Because as we know, women don't often have functional pockets. So where do you how do you how do you transport? Uh, discreetly tucked behind your ear. <laughs> Just take your tampon like a pencil. <laughs> you like pretend it's a cigarette. You're like, oh hey, just smoking my tampon. How about casually? How about, uh, how about in your? Isn't that why you like take a purse or bag or something with you to the bathroom? Have it there. Well, it you can, hide some it? people can, but then it it's a, then your, it becomes obvious you're taking strap? your purse in your bra strap. That's a new one. Or un, or you got like some thick bra straps. Or in the uh, in the in like your your waist, like the waist of your the waistline of your pants. You could just you know, put it in there. I'm just cu- I just want this to keep going. About, I want to hear all about, the ideas. How about you just hold it in your hand and you go <laughs> and just walk and just walk. Yeah, that's yeah, the dream. How about you like show it to people and you're like, hey, this is what I'm going to do and this is normal and this happens to half the population and I'm going to go change my tampon now. There you go. Why yeah. are you, why are you hiding it? Yeah, you take a that's sign. The bigger that's like, question. You take a sign that says, "I am now going to the bathroom to change my tampon." Yeah. Well, Any questions? So, what is the answer? Well, it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. I just wanted to see what you'd what? say. <laughs> and this amazing thing, Ann Arbor was the first city in America where, like, actually, if you go any place in public, there's free menstrual products. Oh, that is awesome. Really? Oh. Just yeah. Anywhere. Nice. Because period sense. poverty is like a real big thing. Like, right. I mean, we have toilet like paper everywhere, right? Like, what's really yeah. what's the difference when you think about it? So, what is readily available in the women's in the bathroom when you get there? Because they got they got like the machines that have products. Again, it depends right? on the bathroom. Some are better than others, okay. but they're usually pretty cheap. But they'll they'll get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Or you just ask somebody else in the bathroom with you. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's do a couple more. A couple more. How many symptoms of a period can you list? Oh my god! Um, cramps, like abdominal cramps, um, mood swings. Okay. Irritability. Okay. Why are you looking at me like this? I feel like this is getting personal. <laughs> That eye contact uh, was too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God, I don't. I think I'm. I'm not going to do very well on this one. Keep going. <laughs> I, I don't know if I have any more to add. <laughs> well, now you Cramps know which ones. Mood swings. Is your <laughs> 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 Doctor Wyan, why don't you give us a few more? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think people can have all kinds of weird stuff, right? Like, I know people who have like vomiting. A lot of people have fatigue. Um, apparently, there's a thing like where a lot of people have like bowel changes, right? They'll have like diarrhea around their period or hmm. issues with that. Um, but like all kinds of things, headaches. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is I. Okay, I saw on a meme once, and I or an article or something, something online. So you tell me. Let's fact check this. Tell yeah. me how if you think this is correct, yeah. that some people's period pain can be as intense as, you know, like if a male were having a heart attack, but that, yeah. you know, we're still expected to just go about our daily life as normal during all of that pain. But, but if you saw a male having a heart attack, you would be like, oh my gosh. Totally. Don't- Did you see that video? There was maybe like on TikTok or something, but they like, it was like in some sort of, it looked like a like convention center or something. And this woman had like a machine oh, of that. some yeah. sort and like, she put it on this man and oh, she was yeah, like, this yeah. is, and like cranked it all the way up or whatever. And he got like seven and he was like clearly having like serious problems. But yeah, simulator I mean, I think is like people a period have, pain simulator. Yeah. Have a lot of pain. And I think it's like sadly normalized, right? People are like, oh, you just right. suffer through your periods. It's like if it was men, like no one would ever right. say that. That wouldn't be happening. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Last one here. Okay. 
How much does a box of tampons cost? Oh, I mean, I have purchased this before for you. Maybe like once. You've sent me to the store before. Yeah. And I did it with a smile on my face. Well, that was that was. Show us the face that you like were at the like cashier. Like, show us the face that you had. <laughs> oh, he went to the self checkout. You know that. <laughs> he didn't go to a cashier. All right, all right, all right. Uh, box. Uh, how many comes? I uh, like. I'm guessing like twelve or something. Um, we'll you do like the one. The answer I have is for a box of forty ob tampons. Forty. Okay, that's a lot of tampons. I uh, I would. Uh, how about twenty dollars? $12. Okay, a box of 40 OB tampons currently costs $7.68 on Amazon. Oh, okay. So okay. there you go. Is that, I have no context for if that's a good price or not. All the stores now are like, let's have a separate section where men can buy tampons and they'll all be like $20. Yeah. And we'll make a ton of money. Like huge <laughs> It's like markup. a reverse like, pink what's tax. What's $50? It's like a $50 yeah. for a box like, of tampons. like, I don't know. I, mean, I guess this is what it costs. I'll just right. buy it. I got to get out of here as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Little, Very uncomfortable. A little high with the $20. Yeah, you right. were a little high. I mean, you could get period. like a, there, again, there's a range of things, mm -hmm. different costs, different price points, all this, all the things. But a box of four, that's like a very, a very basic, like those don't even have an applicator. Mm -hmm. It's just, a, you know, 40 OB tampons are just, just the cotton and the string. Gotcha. 768. Does that make sense to you what she's saying about an applicator? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. I just, yes. you know, I don't know. I think a lot of people would be like applicator. Like... Right. That's true. That's a good call. Okay, so there you go. You did pretty well. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I'm impressed. I, yeah. you know, the, I've got things like from med school floating around my brain, Somewhere. and sometimes yeah. I can snag them. And mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I'm sure I got some hematology things. Uh, you know, some like iron deficiency anemia and yeah. RDW and uh, look at you. Yeah, the uh, that was a very hematology right? comment. RDW. Yeah, that's that's a thing on the from CDC. an ophthalmologist. What is yeah. what, what what by the way? What is your favorite um, uh, form of anemia uh, to quiz students and residents and fellows Iron about? Yeah, because everyone you, thinks it's like, like super one? easy, but everyone gets it wrong. Hmm. I'm sure you could just talk for know, an, uh, an hour. I mean, it's super it. common with your yeah. girls. You have to think about this because we had a paper in JAMA. It was like 40 percent of 12 to 21 year olds have iron deficiency. How do really? you, what do you look for yeah. if you're just, well, it's just, the problem is, is that like when you menstruate, you lose a lot of blood and then all of our food has like less iron than it historically did. And people eat less mm. like iron rich foods. Um, so it's just like incredibly prevalent, but it can cause tons of non-specific symptoms. So people don't even necessarily know like fatigue, it can cause sleep problems. It can cause like cognitive, like slowing, cause like anxiety and depression, eating ice or like non-nutritive substance, like a million things. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. What's that? That's pica. Is that what pica. that is? Yeah. Pica. I had a, I had my, my, um, 11th grade, uh, history teacher would eat chalk. Ew. Uh, and I think he had severe iron deficiency. Yeah. 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 It wasn't like a gag or something. No, he would just like, he would like, we'd, we'd look over, we'd and hear like a crunch nibbling. and he'd be nibbling on a piece of chalk. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, crazy. No. Like I've had kids like tires and like, um, like the stuff that walls are made up. I mean, it's drywall. crazy. Drywall. <laughs> yeah, that's drywall. Not, exactly. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm like, you know, this that stuff. walls are made up. <laughs> They're eating their walls. Exactly. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. So is that just like you just get a little supplement at the grocery yeah. store or what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Or your doctor can prescribe it. We do a lot more like IV iron now. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, there you go. The more you know. All right. Well, thank you for for the knowledge about periods. You're welcome. I'm sure you will be That's getting great. so much more over the next Ooh. few years. Yes. As yeah. we have a, an 11 and a half year old starting middle school this yeah, year. It's oh my right gosh. around the corner. Mm -hmm. so. Have they started yet? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. My kids yeah. had first day today. Yeah. Well, let's take one middle more school. break and we'll be right back. All right. We are back with Dr. Angela Wyant and we are going to read a story sent in by one of our listeners. Uh, this is from Sarah. She says, Dear Ortho Bro, 
Dr. G showed us you apologizing to nephrology by saying, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was making your little bean buddies sad. That, that is one of my favorite lines. That one genuinely made me crack up. <laughs> and that doesn't happen very often anymore. Oh, I didn't mean, bean to, hurt, buddies. I didn't mean to hurt your little bean buddies. Yeah. Ortho's a great character. They sound so cute that way, don't they? I know they, they do. Like, That's yeah, why they it's do. so funny. He's, he's just like a, a Labrador or something. Yesterday, when the caregiver for my 88-year-old Parkinson's suffering dad called and said, I need you to talk to him. He won't drink any water, and we're about to go out to visit the urologist. You. you. You're, we're about to go out to visit the urologist with him, dehydrated from last week's heat exhaustion. So I said to him, you know what? If you don't show some love to your little bean buddies, they are going they are, they aren't going to love you back. And he started laughing and drank two glasses of water, <laughs> one with the kind of icky tasting rehydration salts. Thank you for the inspiration. Oh, there you go. I love so that. Heartwarming. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> little bean buddies. Yeah. Uh, be, Ortho out there saving lives. Be kind to your little bean buddies. Yeah. Drink when you're thirsty. I feel like that's something for the peds ER to like Right, yes. kids would be all about little bean buddies. They would. Yeah, we should Gotta do some your oral rehydration therapy for your little bean buddies. Yeah. Oh, make a little like stuffy yeah. thing, like little yes. stuffy yeah. bean buddies. Put that on your on your website. On our merch. Sell that. Yeah, we need to make <laughs> yes. that a little bean. Oh, that would be so cute. I really do want to do that. I we do, need to do that. All right, let's and do every it. ER can have one and be like, you have to drink your oral rehydration <laughs> for your little bean buddy. You can there sing you a little go. song with it. Yeah, yeah. come up with a bean buddy. You can make song. it where it will frown or it will smile. So you can, mm. you know, yeah. all kinds of You should of stuff make it interactive where, like, if you fill it up with water, then it smiles. Yeah, it is smiles. Yeah. <laughs> man, we are. All sorts of good ideas. Oh, today. man, this is great. <laughs> I'll send well, you my notes. I'll send yeah, you my notes. Please, yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> and send us your stories, knock knock high at human content.com. Thank you, Sarah, for that one. And thank you. To Dr. Angela Wyan for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. Now, we want to make sure that uh, you talk about um, your annual fundraising competition, which is a, a great thing that's, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk. You talk about it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So we have an annual fundraising competition um, for all you healthcare workers or non-healthcare workers. We would love for people to join. Um, it's called Healthcare Workers versus Hunger. We started it in 2020, so the year of the pandemic, and we've raised over $1.6 million for different food banks. Amazing. You can give to any food bank, um, and it's all team-based. We have not ever had an ophthalmology team, just saying. Um, oh. But we do have like a surgery anesthesia group, um, gotcha. although I think they should be separate because there's a lot of like – Battling yeah, when they were separate. yeah exactly we yeah. did really well when they were like competing with each other but then they joined forces not so oh that's uh, no good uh, yeah but we have a website that we have amazing like teenage volunteers that like created this website for us and healthcare workers versus that's hunger.org awesome. um healthcare and it'll be workers. like the week after thanksgiving so check it out that's yeah. hcw versus hunger vs hunger.org right yeah yeah uh, and it's in december when you do it every year uh, yeah, it'll right be up. like the week after Thanksgiving. So we start usually around like Giving okay. Tuesday. Awesome. And I'm sure you're going to be tweet, tweeting about it or Xing yes. about it. God, what I'll, be I'll be tweeting. I'll be tweeting. Yeah. I'll tweeting be tweeting. About like 20 years from now, I'll be like the only one tweeting. I'll be like, I'm tweeting still, guys. They'll be like, that doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, and uh, again, you are the Shematologist yeah. on Twitter. So definitely check out um, check out that. Lots of good education tutorials. Stuff. Tweet it oh, like good tweet tutorials. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like now I'm gonna like mispronounce that. I'm like tutorial. Yeah, yeah. I know. Tut I'm making everyone think too hard about it. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, we'll I keep did up. see you do that with my last name. You're like Dr. Angela. What? Yeah. Wyand. Well, I said it. I struggle it right. sometimes with names. Wyand. Yeah. Yes. Wyand. I. Anyway. Yeah. I'm always. <laughs> I'm, I'm very self conscious about pronunciation, which is weird because as an ophthalmologist, yeah, I say, you have the weirdest. I say words. ridiculous words all the time. So and they just you know, roll off your tongue. For God's sake, I call myself Doctor Glock and Fleck. Yeah, so, I know. Anyway. Well, thanks again for joining us, Angela. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Well, I guess we covered everything there is to know about periods, didn't we? No. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. Sure. Where, where do you hide the tampon? Uh, well, I don't. Oh, you mean if I'm yeah. walking? <laughs> no, where where do you put like the in tampon? Our house. Oh. <laughs>
that's a, that's a different podcast. <laughs> no, I know where they live in our house. Yeah. Yeah, but but you know the the question about you know you're going to the well, bathroom. Well, I think like when you're in junior high or you know yeah. whatever, uh, there were a lot of people would would do the up the sleeve trick. Up the sleeve. Yeah, oh, if you're wearing long one. sleeves. Oh, mm-hmm. gotcha. Okay. Or because you know, it's too pocket. obvious if you're going with a purse. With a bag, right. right? And that's the only time you you yeah. don't usually take a bag. You know, so right. You, they, you come up with all sorts of little tricks. I don't know. Maybe, I hope that's not as big of a thing anymore. Who knows? I guess we'll find out. Well, you you guys can let us know. Is it still a thing? Do you have, uh, you know... Any junior high people listening to this podcast? (laughs) Well, no, people that have... God, I hope... I hope... I mean, they have much better things to do. They're all, uh, you know, hopefully... No, none of them are listening. Yeah, definitely not. But people that have junior high aged kids... Which is us now. Just us. Yeah. As of tomorrow. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, anyway, let us know uh, what you thought of the episode, what you thought of the game, what you, th- what you think about our, our uh, you know guests and any future guests that you'd want to see on this podcast. We love hearing that feedback from you guys. Lots of ways to hit us up. Email us, knockknockhigh at human-content.com. We're on all the social media networks. You can also hang out with us and our human content podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at human content pods. Shout out to all the wonderful listeners leaving great feedback. We love seeing those reviews. If you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out. Like Kitty Pants ILM on Apple said, recommended, recommend for healthcare workers and all. Love and support the show. You are doing great work. Keep it up. Thank you, Kitty Pants. I just, I want more excuses to say Kitty Pants, Kitty Pants. in my good, everyday life. Kitty Pants ILM. ILM, um, you know, to me, that is an internal limiting membrane. It's a layer of the retina. Oh, Anyway, um, <laughs> full episodes of this podcast are on my YouTube channel every week at D Glock and Fleck and check that out. Uh, also like skits and stuff. I got lots of stuff on my YouTube channel mm-hmm. uh, and lots of cool perks on our Patreon. You got to check out our Patreon. A bonus episode where we react to medical shows and movies. You can hang out with uh, other members of the Knock Knock High community. We're there too. We're active there. Uh, early ad-free episode access, interactive Q&A live stream events, a lot more. Patreon.com slash Glockenflecken or go to Glockenflecken.com. Speaking of Patreon community perks, new member shout out to James. Thank you for joining, James. Hello, James. Love to see you. Uh, and shout out to, uh, that was a little uh, Midwest there. Love to see you. Love to see you. Yeah. Bring some hot dish. <laughs> some hot dish. Shout out to all the Jonathans, as usual. Uh, uh, hot dish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> thinking about, now I'm thinking about like Maybe everybody, some tater tot casserole. everybody on our Patreon coming for a big potluck. Oh. A little virtual potluck. Mm hmm. Virtual head nod to all the Jonathans. We have Patrick, Lucia C, Sharon S, Omar, Edward K, Stephen G, Ross Box, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, Dr. J, Chaver W, Jonathan A, Leah D, K L, Rachel L, and Ann P. Thank you all. And Patreon roulette time. Random shout out to someone in the emergency medicine tier. Shout out to Marcus K for being a patron. Thank you, Marcus. And thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Krishna Flannery, also known as the Glock and Fleckens. Special thanks to our guest today, Dr. Angela Wyan. And I'm so self-conscious about it now. I always feel like I'm going to say it wrong every single time. Dr. Angela, I'm going to say it confidently now. Dr. Angela Wyan. Our there executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omar Binsvi. To learn about our Knock Knock Highs, program disclaimer, ethics, policy, submission, verification, licensing terms, and HIPAA release terms, go to glockandflecken.com or reach out to us at knockknockhigh at human-content.com with any questions, concerns, or fun medical puns <laughs> or limericks. Uh, what other uh, short jokes? Well, I proposed haikus at one point, but you it's kind of poo pooed that. Haikus, that's too highbrow. Hmm. Too you know, smart. Early on when we were dating, you you wrote a list of haikus. Or not a list, but you wrote, you know, a series of haikus for me that you still, you kept apparently, or I kept. I don't know. It's in our garage. Were you impressed? Knock Knock High is a human <laughs> content production. Bye.
Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen, or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts. Or join the party over on Patreon, where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below, let us know what you think.